This morning I want to continue on. I felt like the Lord has, has challenged us as a church, individuals, that we need to reach out to our world. And that's the theme, reaching your world for Jesus. This year is our theme that we're uh, for the church. And I think it's important that each one of us recognize you're a vital part of your world. Each one of you know people that I don't know. You have influence on people that I don't know. You care about people that I don't know. But what are you sharing with them? Are you sharing your fears, your doubts, and your unbeliefs? Are you sharing the Jesus that you have in your heart with them? And we've talked about the scripture here in Acts 1.8 that basically tells us to go back into Jerusalem. Jesus had been out on the mountain and Jesus was taken up from his disciples, but Jesus gave them some instructions to go back into Jerusalem and that there to wait for the power. But when the power came, he would give them boldness. He would give them the ability to go forth and become witnesses. He didn't say you might be able to have it. He told them you can have it. And then last week we shared in the aspect of your Jerusalem. Your household is where you need to begin. But you can't take your household any further than what you are yourself. And that's what we want to share with you here this morning. Again, Jesus told them to go back into Jerusalem, wait for the power, and when the power came up on them, he would give them boldness to witness. You need boldness to witness in your Jerusalem, your own home. How does that begin? I'm just going to recap a little bit, and then I'm going to move on to your Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. It has to be personal with you. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, where you're at, you will not carry it to your Judea and Samaria or the uttermost parts of the world. If you can't live it in your own home, you're not going to live it in your Judea or Samaria or uttermost parts of the world. So it has to be personal with you. It has to be a commitment with you. It has to be a dedication with you. You have to be faithful. Every one of us are going to struggle. You're going to walk through periods of time where struggle. If not, my Bible's wrong because when we see people that God used in the Bible, there were periods and times of struggle in their life. How about hiding in a cave? How about running from God? But you know what? When they got their feet under under them and began to believe in God, what God had promised them, it came to pass. So I want to challenge you here this morning. Man is the head of your home. Are you leading your home? You have a responsibility there. But if you don't have a man in your home, wherever you're at, you are responsible. Each one of us are responsible for our own lives to the Lord. Is it personal with you? Do you have a commitment? Because you know what? God allows us to have children or grandchildren. Uh Uh-oh. It gets a little more responsibility there. Because what we allow in our homes in moderation, the world's going to take to excess. And our kids, if they don't see the firm foundation at home, 
If they don't see it in your life. Moms, if they don't see you reading your Bible and praying, they're not going to read their Bible and they're not going to pray. Dads, if they don't see you reading your Bible and praying and leading them into the nurture and admonition of the Lord, the school system's going to take over and they're going to indoctrinate them into their standard. And that's what's happened in our country today is the school system has indoctrinated us into what we should be doing in our own homes, but it, be, it doesn't resonate with us that we have that responsibility. What happened in Jerusalem? And this is what needs to happen in your Jerusalem, the same as it did in Jerusalem. Jesus told, go back and wait for the power. It has to be established in your own home, in your Jerusalem. Yes, Jerusalem was a circle or the center point. But Jesus told them to go back. They went back. They waited in the upper room. And what happened to them? The Holy Spirit fell upon them. And they were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need men and women who are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit to have the power that Jesus told us that we need to have. But most of us say, well, there isn't any Holy Spirit. He doesn't give us any power. Yes, He does. And the thing is that before you can go to Jerusalem or Judea and Samaria, you need to go to Jerusalem. You need to secure what God told them in Jerusalem. Where did, the, where did it all begin? In Jerusalem. Where's it going to begin? In your personal relationship with Jesus. We have people today who do not understand a personal relationship with Jesus. What happens when you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Jesus gives you instructions. Jesus brings conviction into your heart and life. But Jesus will wants to give you instruction. He told him, go back. Wait. Oh, it's 10 years, it's 15 years, it's 20 years. We get tired of waiting, we get tired of trying, we get tired of all this stuff. Man, I, I think of oh, poor old Noah. Noah, build me a boat. Yes, Lord. Five years goes along. Ten years goes along. Twenty years goes along. Sixty years goes along. Are you sure I'm supposed to build you a boat? I ain't got no help here. See, God shows us we can do it. Me and Him, we're on good terms. We can do it. You can do it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. For 60 more years, he walks out there every day building a boat for Jesus. Or God, whichever one you want to tell him. I'm tired, Lord. It's not working, Lord. Where are we at? Come on. Get in a relationship with Jesus. And it's a day by day by day process. Whoops, I only drove one nail today, Lord. Sorry about that. Instead of two or three. Oh, Lord, I'm tired today. I, I'm, I don't think I'm going to build a boat. Better build the boat because when my time comes, my time is there. You need to build your boat. You need, to, you need to go to your Jerusalem. You need to get it solidified right here and right here in your heart with Jesus. I am going to raise my family for Jesus. No matter what happens, come hell or high water. Oh, you know what? We all go through struggles. My kids wouldn't even tell me some of the things that they did. That they know that their dad would not have wanted, would not have been very happy. 
And they even tell me little glimpses of now of things that they used to do. And their daddy's still not happy. But you know what? Jesus kept them safe. And he broke them through it. And he took them through it. You know, some of us are just so stubborn and bullheaded that you can get hit in the head with a two before and still be stubborn and bullheaded. Instead of saying, okay, Lord, I got the, you know. How many of you have spent three days in the belly of a fish with seaweed wrapped around your head? In the smelly, the smelly stench of that. Matt read that in Sunday school class this morning. But it was when he came. When you come to the recognition of who God really is in your life. Then you're willing to come to a place of surrenderance. Now, I don't even like to think of the picture when God brought him to the place he was supposed to be. And then he, and that old fish goes, Bleh! All that seaweed, ooh, gross. Sometimes it's out of the grossness of our life that, that Jesus can use you as the messenger of God. Sometimes our families are the grossness of life because we have said, no, God, no, God, no, God. And God just simply pats you on the back and says, but I love you. I love you. Your Jerusalem is where you solidify it with God. And then when you solidify it with God, then we're able to go out and share it. Because you live it. When you live it at home, you're going to live it at your Judea and your Samaria and the uttermost parts. When you know the realities of what God can do in your Jerusalem, you will be able to share it in your Judea and Samaria and other most parts of the world. And you will want to share it. Because your friends, your Jerusalem, your Judea, is the friends, the world that God has put you in. And they are looking to you for an example. You know, we have so many people today telling us, you do what I say, but not what I do. Because what they say and what they do are two different things. Folks, in the church, it's been the same way. We say, you do what I tell you. And then they watch us do something else. They watch us compromise with the world. They watch us take on standards that the world takes on. Instead of the standard of this word of God. That's why we have so many sad, defeated Christians today. Is because we don't pick this up. You know what? God wants us to fellowship for a reason. For encouragement, for strength. He wants us to fellowship for a reason so that we can begin to understand. When you are in your Jerusalem... Who is there to tell? But when you step into your Judea and Samaria, and you know what? Some of the disciples, when they shared, people didn't like them. You know what? Well, sometimes when you begin to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ, somebody's not going to like you either. But what did Jesus do? He brought a whole new circle of friends. Some of us are afraid to pass out the old, the old friends because, oh, we had fun there. You had misery. You had heartache. You had troubles. You had circumstances beyond control. But what happens when Jesus brought that new circle in that was experiencing the same thing in Jerusalem? The church began to multiply. What happened? They began to become bolder. 
Jesus told them, when the Holy Ghost comes up on you, you're going to have the power to witness. I'm afraid. Yeah. But God will give you boldness. God will give you power. God will give you opportunity. Oh, but pastor, you just don't understand. I am so busy. I understand. But you know what? It doesn't matter how tired I am. If I really want to do it. If I got tickets to go to the Iowa Hawkeye games, you know, and it wouldn't matter how tired I was. I would still make that effort. Oh, but it's for Jesus. Uh, I can do that tomorrow. No. Today is a day of salvation. Many times when Jesus prompts you to witness and to be bold with your witness and to tell somebody, he's already prepared somebody else's heart. You may just get to drop the seed. But you know what? It's a whole lot of fun when you get to reap the harvest. Oh, look, I led somebody to Jesus. I, I helped them to understand who Jesus was. It's not near as fun going out there and just planting that garden seed. But boy, it is a lot of fun when you get to harvest that, when you get to harvest that which you've planted. But you know what? God knows who is going to pick the harvest. But are we faithful? Are you going to your Jerusalem, your Judea, or the uttermost parts of the world? If you don't solidify it at home, You'll never solidify it in the world. Because you know what? You are the only gospel somebody will ever read. And if your gospel message is teaching and preaching compromise, if you're not living up to what God has challenged you to be, you're going to preach a false gospel. Why are so many churches today going through total revolutionary changes? Because they're teaching and preaching the philosophy of the world instead of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today, you are the ones. Where are you at? Each one of us have to ask that question. You know, I, I've told you the story before about a gentleman in one of the churches we pastored. He said, I was saved 60 years ago by the skin of my teeth. And I said, okay, good. But what have you done, done since then? Have you ever shared your testimony with somebody? Why, no, I ain't sharing my testimony with anybody. Okay. Have you ever been happy in the Lord? Well, there's no sense of that nonsense. Come on. When we have a brand new baby, we get excited. I love to hold those brand new babies. I'm not very good at it. I'm afraid I'm always going to break them. I haven't broken one in 50 years, so I don't think, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. But just think of that. He sat for 60 years and did basically nothing. And so I challenged him. I said, I want you to do something for, this, for me this week, but it's more for Jesus, but just for me this week. I want you to go out and share your testimony with somebody this week. Do you have anybody that you can share with? Oh well, yeah, I got a guy that I go to coffee with every day. I says, did he know Jesus? No. I said, can you share with him? And he shared with him. And so that next Sunday morning when he came back to church, I seen this smile on his face. And I said, did you, did you handle your assignment? Yep, I did. He says, why didn't I learn this 60 years ago? That I could share Jesus with somebody. You know, folks, 
It's that simple. What does the scripture say? Tell what you've seen, what you've heard, and what you know to be true. You can't live somebody else's testimony. But you can share what Jesus is doing in your life and what God has challenged you to do. Have you been to your Jerusalem? Are you filled with the power and know that you know that you know that Jesus can use you? Church, there's a dead and dying world right outside these doors. Well, it's not even outside the doors. It's inside the doors. Because there's people. <laughs> this is being bold and blunt. But there's people inside the doors that don't know that Jesus loves them. And we need, we need to share that love that Jesus has. It was a privilege yesterday, Ron. It was a privilege yesterday to hear you announce to, to Zach what took place in last Sunday service and tell him how much of a miracle it was. That's sharing your testimony for Jesus. That's sharing what the power of God can do. Now, how is it received? It's not your problem. As a watchman for souls, you tell them And if they don't heed the call, you've done what Jesus has asked you to do. But you know what? I got the privilege of planting seeds for the last 15 years. And that seed keeps coming back. So I know God has a purpose and a plan for this young man's life. I hope it doesn't take 40 years or 60 years. But I hope that we get to reap a harvest. See, he's part of my Judea and Samaria. God has people in your lives that you have been associated with that are part of your Judea and your Samaria, but you have to come from your Jerusalem to be able to share with them. I hope you hear what I'm saying here this morning because it starts in Jerusalem, your home, your life. Your life, before it can go to anybody else's, it has to be true and living in your life. Oh, but my wife doesn't, doesn't agree with me. Your wife doesn't have to agree with you. It starts in your Jerusalem. It starts in your heart, your life. And I'll close with another story that I've shared with you before. We had a lady in our church who became faithful to the Lord, committed to the Lord. For 16 years, every Sunday morning, she got up, got ready to go to church, and her husband said, where are you going this morning? You know where I'm going this morning. And she off to church she'd go. She did that for 16 years. You may have a husband or you may have a wife that won't go to church with you, but you be the faithful one. God will reward your faithfulness. Someday, they will go. And you will serve the Lord together. After 16 years, this man said, Where are you going this morning? She said, I'm going to the same place that I go every Sunday morning. I'm going to church. And she got ready to go walk out the door. And he said, If you'll wait just a minute, I'll go with you. And he went with her, gave his life to Jesus, and they served the Lord together. What may look bleak right now, please, 
We've heard testimony this morning. Sowing in, sowing in, sowing in. If you faint not, you shall reap a harvest. But God, I, I want it now. Understand. That God, in the process of time that it took Moses to go through the 40 years in Pharaoh's courts, the 40 years on the backside of the desert, and the 40 years of doing what God called him to do. God was building character and God was building something in their lives. Sometimes we can't see that. We don't know how the Holy Spirit is working on somebody else's life. You know. Noah. I, you know, I sympathize with Noah sometimes because, you know, I preach week after week after week. And a lot of times I don't see anybody come to the Lord. You know what? Noah went there for 100, almost 120 years. Every day he was faithful. He was committed. He was dedicated to the cause that called, called him to do. You be faithful. You be dedicated. And you mark out the cause that God has for you. He may be, he may be saying to you, you're going to build faithfulness in a life. You're going to have an influence in a life. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to be able to direct a life. He built the boat. He didn't get to take anybody on the boat but his family. But you know what? He got to take his family. He got to take his family. You know what? The most important thing to me is people being saved. But the most important thing is reaching my Jerusalem first. Being prepared, setting the example, being faithful, being committed. And you know what? We've been able to see, we've been able to reach out. And God has honored that in our lives. God will honor that in your life. Will you set the example? Will you get, get to your Jerusalem? Oh, but all the things that took place before. You know what? Sometimes it has a hard time. People have a hard time of forgetting yesterday. And they want to bring it up all the time. But you want Jesus puts it behind his back. Jesus buries it in the sea. Jesus, as far as the east is from the west, never, 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 never to remember it against us again. Can we bury our past? Can we bury it in the depths of the sea as far as the east is from the west? That failure that happened in sin, in jealousy, in anger, in bitterness, you know what? We have to go past that stage and to God, I submit it into your hands. Place that husband in God's hands. Place that wife in God's hands. Place those children in God's hands. And believe. God, you said. You know what the problem is that so many times we understand what we did in the past. And we, the devil likes to throw it up in your face and say, well, look who you were, look, look what you did. But I wish we could get the other side of that coin when we've come to know Jesus and say, okay, I don't, then that all stuff's gone. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new, 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 new creature. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Get that picture in your mind. He created you all over again. Old things have passed away. And I'm bringing some new stuff. New stuff. But you know what? And I'll close with this. You have to accept the new stuff. That new relationship. 
that newfound uh, instructions. Change it. You are the only one that can. The Holy Spirit can convict you all day and all night, but you are the only one who can change and you can become that new creature in Christ Jesus. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the old and most parts of the world. You know, in my life, a lot of, a lot of things that happened in my, has happened in my life when I had my heart attack, we heard from 10 different nations, God, I don't have any influence in anybody. We had people from 10 different nations that called to check on us. You have more influence than you ever know. Will you allow your light to shine for Jesus? Let's pray. Father, you know every heart that is here. You know the timetable for each one of us. But Jesus, as your disciples were there, and they saw you. They saw you for that 40 days. Yet you just, again, reinstilled into their lives the calling that you had upon them. And Father, we here this morning, we have been called by your name. You did not choose me, but I chose you. So you have chosen each one of us to be special instruments, to be special people in your kingdom. So I pray that, Father, that this morning that you will reach down to each one of us right where we're at. Doesn't matter what we've done in the past. All that junk, that garbage. But it matters what we do from this moment on because we accept you afresh and anew as our Lord and Savior. And if you're here this morning and you don't have that relationship with Jesus, I ask you this morning, ask Jesus to come in to your heart, to your life. Lord, that you will just touch them. That you'll wipe out that past. And you'll give them that fresh new oil into their lamps. You'll give them that fresh new experience in their life. That you give that fresh new anointing in their life. And Father, the power of your Spirit will fall upon them so they can reach their Jerusalem, so they can reach their Judea and their Samaria and to the uttermost parts. Father, we thank you for that this morning. And I ask that God that you would fill each one of us with the boldness to step forth and to share what we've seen, what we've heard, and what we know to be true in our lives. And we thank you, Father. As that seed goes forth, you said that it would bring forth a harvest. And Father, we thank you for the harvest that's coming from the seed that's sowing, being sowed. We thank you for the, each of these lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Greet one another this morning. If anyone can help take down stuff, we'd appreciate that. But